Hey, what's going on, chess lovers? This is um, Maurice Bishop Chess. Y'all yeah, know my slogan, life is a game of chess. All right, guys, we're going to uh, get into um, the l Shah system. For all y'all that don't know, um, I'm actually streaming uh, through my Twitch. Uh, my Twitch is Tacticians A Beast. Uh, I'm actually... For anybody that's actually on here, uh, Tacticians a beast. That is my uh, name on there. And just to make sure uh, everything is right. So I'm just making sure everything is. Yes, yeah, so everything sounds right. All right. So guys, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna be doing two things. All right. So I'm gonna be doing uh, the L shot system for white, uh, which is uh, a short game that I had played. Uh, I just wanted to show y'all how the L shot system could actually, you know, dismantle your opponent and all that because it's so tricky and sneaky and all that. So, uh, and this one is really short. This one is like 12 moves. So I'll let you know with that. So um, C3 is and, and I'm playing as white. All right. So, and the person I played was uh, Dobri Grace, so that was the name. But I played C3, he played E6, and uh, I played Queen A4. Now, notice Queen A4, um, when you do Queen A4 in the uh, beginning of the game, especially for somebody that plays the French defense a lot, um, this Queen A4 is very annoying because their French players go by the book, they go by this move on D5. Uh, that's the thing. They go by this move on d5 and everything, but by you having this queen on a4, you know, it uh, it pins them and it's kind of very annoying. Which is why most likely uh, most French players is going to go knight c6 to take away that pin. Uh, I see things um, where opponents play c6 and then d5, but uh, by them doing that, they pretty much cramp their own position and everything, especially when it's. They're playing against something that they're not used to so and that's why i kind of like playing it because it, it really makes them up and then you also got to think about this is bullet as well so keep that in mind all right so um knight c6 is what uh, my opponent played uh i played g4 now for all y'all that ever watch my uh channel like my whole youtube channels and everything and even all of my playlists with the l shot system y'all know that a lot of times I may go um, D3 first and sometimes H3 first and then go G4. Or sometimes C3 and then D3, then Queen A4 and then H3 and G4. So in this position, I try to mix it up. I try to, you know, keep my opponent thinking or whatever, things like that. A lot of times when people don't know about this opening, they'll be like, oh, you're a rookie and he don't know what he's doing. But little do they know, you know, it's... uh. <laughs> kind of funny though but anyway d5 uh which is what he played you know obviously french players they're going to play d5 they want to attack in the center and all that that's what their job that's what they're supposed to do uh, i go h4 uh just to give y'all a heads up um based on um this l shot says uh the whole point of the g4 and h4 is nine uh nine out of ten um black would normally castle king side even if they don't, it doesn't matter. If they keep their king in the center of the board, it doesn't really help them. If they decide to castle queen side, you know, I have moves like b4 and then my queen is already here. So I could already already bring the forces into the queen side, uh, which is another reason why I like this open. It doesn't matter where you go at, you know, we're going to figure it out. All right. But the whole point of g4 and h4, again, the king side attack, but also the queen on a4 is not just here just to pin people, but also in the long run, um, when the king do castle king side, when this g5 and h5 pawn is on the fifth rank, then the queen can actually swoop around to the king side. Uh, that's usually what that's for. Um, but obviously, this game goes a little bit different. Um, bishop d7, as you see, my opponent blocks uh, the pin. So now it's um, me facing the bishop. Uh, I go bishop g2 to get my development. He goes knight e5, in which this is pretty much um, typical because this is stuff that your opponent is going to always do either way. They want to chase your queen away because they think that you're not supposed to uh, bring your queen out early. So, And that's pretty much what I did. So I go queen f4. Uh, my opponent, um, he developed his piece with bishop d6. 
getting ready to do a discover check with knight d3 winning the queen uh i just go queen d4 uh, queen d4 is played and uh he goes c5 notice that he's uh extending uh or he, he i mean he's doing what he's supposed to, oh my bad guys He's doing what he's supposed to do. He's supposed to grab in the center and things like that. Notice that only got one piece developed, and that's a bishop. You know, it looks like, ah, like I'm getting crushed and all that. <laughs> that's what it looks like. But, you know, it's funny though. But, uh, queen e3. Uh, sorry about that, guys. Uh, queen e3 is played, and my opponent goes um, knight catcher g4. I go queen h3, hitting. Um, the knight on g4 um and guys this is not the first time that i had positions like this um i had a position where uh it, it was almost similar but the the difference was uh, i wanted to get in my rook on a g file and was dominating like it was just nasty uh the crazy part i've been trying to find this video and i can't find that nowhere or my game i can't find that game anywhere and i can't and i don't remember who i played but it was crazy though but uh, anyway, uh, he goes e5, and usually, guys, when your opponent uh, goes into the center or whatever, you normally they will overextend to the point where they drop a pawn, and that's pretty much what happened. Uh, he dropped the pawn, um, pretty good. Uh, and then my opponent hits me with, um, of course, I'm pretty sure everybody sees this move. Uh, he has his bishop right here, so he hits me with the nice discover attack, you know, hitting my queen sitting my queen my rook and also the bishop is sitting the queen as well it looks like you know it's nothing but with the discover attack that he does he pretty much drops a piece uh, which he goes queen f3 uh and this pretty much uh, was over after this because again guys this was bullet and usually when i play bullet uh sometimes i'll play the l shot uh when i play bullet and everything but of course in this position my opponent uh, goes knight catches h1 and I hit him with checkmate. Now, you're probably wondering, like, what could he did in this position? Um, literally, it didn't matter what he does because he's going to lose this knight e either way. Um, if he goes on uh, knight f6, I just go king captures f2. Uh, because, of course, my queen has to guard this um, bishop as well. Um, but then, I ain't going to lie to you. There, There is another um, nice... Uh, thing too because even after uh knight catches d5 uh he does have bishop d6 um he does have that so which is actually pretty crazy he does have that so yeah that is something so i don't even know if i can even really um do anything with that uh let's see what this one says um yeah so this one so yeah even the even the computer says knight f6 um so so the crazy part is instead of me actually um you know so that that's in the um, diagonal so it's crazy and the crazy part is no matter how many times you play the l shot or whatever and the, regardless of what the engine may say you know the engine may say that white is losing and things like that but in general um realistically it doesn't really um come down to that you know it's always on um, white winning or even if the position is equal you know if your opponent don't know the l shot he'll he'll just lose automatically but um yeah so but i hope this helped guys on um, just giving you some stuff um but yeah but in this case, you know, like I said, bullet, you know, obviously, guys, if I'm playing against a strong player, uh, probably wouldn't play this in the tournament. I just think L shot system is, in my opinion, I used to say that I would play this in the tournament. Uh, and I, honestly, technically, I really would still play this in a tournament. But in my opinion, when you're going against like, like if I'm going for my norm or if I'm going for, you know, my title and all that stuff, obviously, this is not something that I will play. I will play this in speed chest and all that blitz and all that i'll do that but going against like my title stuff i wouldn't play this in tournaments so yeah guys especially with me doing my studying and things that i'm looking at it's just a lot to it guys so all right so now that y'all got um a little uh 
fun stuff with the L shot. Um, now we're gonna actually go to um, with black on um, the actual L shot, um, the actual person that created it. All right. So uh, obviously, um, the real L shot that I, the game I'm about to show you is he he's playing as black. Uh, his opponent name is uh, Curlod. Uh, again, there. Uh, I think Carlotta is like a. I'm not even sure if he's a feeding match. I'm, I'm not really sure, but obviously he's a strong player. But anyway, um, I'm sorry, guys. Uh, C4 is what his opponent played. Um, obviously, L shot goes C6, Knight C3, Queen A5, uh, G3, H6, Knight F3, and then G5. All right, so bishop g2, bishop g7, castle, and then d6. And if you look at this move orders, guys, you will see that uh, eventually we're wanna, we want to go knight d7, knight f8, knight g6, knight f6, g4, h5, or h5. Uh, eventually, we want to bring this uh, queen over. The same thing how I told y'all about uh, for white where white does the uh, suture rule that's pretty much what black uh, trying to do as well but if you're not mindful of uh, the reason why queen is on a5 then you'll fall for it every time all right so uh queen c2 and, and of course and um sorry about that guys uh, in white's position you know white he uh you know he goes queen c2 to because you know, eventually he may want to go on um, e4 and d4 you know grab into the center because that's literally what your opponent is trying to do grab in the center so um knight d7 is played of course uh his opponent goes b3 um notice that he, um for white uh he wants to bring his bishop to an active square and if you notice guys if he went somewhere like d3 um, this bishop would not be active on his side due to my uh, a6 and g5 pawn. Uh, it's, it's no activity there. So he's going to have to go somewhere where he can actually have activity. And that's the reason why this b3 move uh, was played. So that he could bring his bishop, dark square bishop, to an active square. It's the best thing for him to do. Uh, I, uh, L shot goes knight f8. Uh, that's where he goes. Eventually he wants to go knight g6. Now... I, I want to clear this up because a lot of y'all um, been asking me, you know, when to go to knight g6 and then when to go to knight. I'll tell you, um, anytime your king is on the king side castle or whatever, especially you normally want to go knight g6 because um, you because uh, when you push the pawn on g4, you don't want the knight to go h4 because if he does, you could just take off on h4 and then the white king will have an exposed uh, castle king side um if the bishop was let's say like let's say this light square bishop was right here normally you would not actually not normally you don't want to go knight g6 at all at all you never want to go knight g6 at all if a light square bishop is here because what that happen is uh it'll leave you with a light uh a light square weaknesses and you don't want that so normally uh, you will go knight e6 and then try to um, create um, dark square weaknesses um, with the squares and everything and get white to overextend his pieces. Alright, so that's just something y'all need to um, realize. Alright, so always remember that. Alright, so knight f8, um, bishop b2, like I said, you know, he wants to get some space. Um, knight g6, uh, again, you know, he's getting ready to push. Obviously, knight not going to want to go knight h4 because I take, all right? And then d4. Um, d4 is played, and then, uh, of course, l shot goes g4, which is the right move to do. Knight e1, and then l shot goes h5. Now, I'm going to tell you this. There is a principle in the l shot where he always say you need to take the pawn, um, you know? And it's not like white has any threats or any discover attack. He doesn't have none of like that. He hasn't had none of that stuff. Um, the reason why it's important for Black to actually take this pawn because again, if we ever get down to the end game, you know, we'll be straight. You know, uh, we'll have the pawn majority. You know, we'll be good. So, um, of course, in the book, he talks about he he actually talks about you know he should have took the pawn, but uh, he didn't. But he decided he wanted to attack. But just a lesson learned. If you see a free pawn in an L shot. 
Um, obviously, before you take the pawn, make sure he's not threatening you or giving you discover attack or make sure your king is safe. You know, do your checklist. Do all your check boxes and everything. Make sure you're straight before you take any pawns. All right. So don't just take pawn just just to take them. You know, there's a reason. All right. So uh, h5 um, is played, and then um, and actually, and I, I'm gonna show you what it looked like um, after he takes that pawn though. Uh, if bishop catches d4, rook d1, bishop g7, knight d3, and then uh, knight f6. And uh, knight f6 is, and again, with him taking that pawn. Uh, it's still looking good for black because he still got h5 h4 and then he could bring the queen over So it's still good on top of that guys the reason why Taking that pawn is so vital because again, he he won't have to block um, His side like he won't have to uh, Extend in the center where the queen is blocked All right, so that's something to keep in mind All right, so uh, h5 is played. All right h5 is played uh, and then uh, rook d1 um, is actually played all right um, so again guys and this is something I, I want to show y'all um, obviously rook d1 is not really a good move uh, due to the fact that like I told y'all in the beginning the whole point of queen a5 and the g4 is again black wants to go h4 so that he could go h5 so if y'all going to play this l shot for somebody that actually may know that uh, how to play the l shot you need to realize that um, most likely your opponent, if he knows what he's doing, he's going to want to play um, like moves like D5. So let's check that out real quick. And I want to show you what that looked like. Um, should be right here. So let's say D5. If white goes D5, uh, of course we're going to go C5. The reason why we go C5 because we want to lock everything up. Um, and, um, you know, because our, our majority, it, it looks good. Uh, but with knight d3 coming in, h4, you know, we still get that. We still want to attack the king side. Uh, and then a3. Uh, notice with the d5, you know, we lock everything up. We cannot get to the side, so it's a little bit harder. So now black has to move his queen to d8 in order to, like, somehow get to um, this king side, you know. And it just takes it longer, you know what I mean? So, um, so even with b4, b6. And of course we go b6 because again we don't want to just take it right away we just want to lock everything up right we don't want white to do any type of queen side uh attack on us uh even when knight e4 uh king f8 and, and of course as you see guys always, and always remind be mindful of this too you guys don't ever forget but anytime a, a knight is on e4 and y'all know what a dark square bishop is. don't forget a, a lot of times people that play the l side they, they will forget this dark square bishop on the same diagonal as your bishop so don't ever forget that which is why the king goes f8 uh he takes he takes and um of course um this position is pretty much equal uh it's an equal position but i just want you to know uh you know it's, like i said it, it's, it's a lot of stuff <laughs> i will say it. so it's a little bit harder for black to get to the king side all right so Let's go back to where we was at. Rook d1. All right. So that's what the opponent played. Uh, h4 is played, as you can see. Uh, e3. Uh, and then queen h5. As you can see, um, if we take, you know, with, th with threatening checkmate and all of that, you know. And, of course, uh, his opponent actually played bishop h1. Why did he play bishop h1? Because, again, we're threatening uh, capture and then trying to get me but the thing is guys uh, he goes Bishop h1 which is a uh, defensive technique due to the fact that um, he got to move the bishop out the way in order for the Queen to protect uh, that second um, rank all right um, so instead of just taking right away uh, L shot actually goes Knight f6 L shot goes Knight f6 guys all right uh because the thing is uh another principle guys even though we're playing stuff that's out of books and we're breaking a lot of principles but again the principle you don't want to break is you know develop even though we kind of like broke the um our principle but you still want to develop your piece especially if you're already attacking like in this position right now we're already uh in the attacking sense so you definitely want to develop your piece and that's pretty much what else i did he goes knight f6 
uh, knight d3 is played, and then he developed his last piece, which is bishop f5. Alright, bishop f5. Alright, um, so bishop f5, um, e4 is played, and then um, bishop d7 is played. Now, there is something that I uh, do want to show y'all guys. Uh, If I could find it, um, I want to go back to here. Uh, remember last time I, got, I said instead of d5, you know, your opponent goes d5 to block you from this side. Uh, I didn't get a chance to really show you this one, but even if he goes c5, this is another way of blocking it. So I have to show you this. He takes, he takes, h4. Uh, and that normally would be the move, but I want to show you what happens if... Uh, queen catcher c5 if queen catcher c5 right uh, knight d3 and then queen f5 you know just you know doing what he do pinning the the knight and then if bishop e4 then we get the move queen g5 and then white does this nice tactic on black uh, which is bishop catcher c6 now you're probably wondering like what is this like he just sacked a bishop like why why he do this i want y'all to really look at it <laughs> it's pretty crazy though um i mean obviously guys i can't just show you the good stuff for black i gotta show you the stuff that your opponent can do on you too if you're not wise you know but bishop catcher c6 um b catcher c6 and then knight e4 and what's happening here is knight is actually not only hitting the knight but he's also hitting um, this bishop as well. And then white is also hitting queen capture c6. Which is a monstrous move guys. Obviously black is going to protect his um, bishop on g7. But even if you do that he'll take your bishop. He'll take and then queen capture c6 check. King f8 and then queen captures a8. And I like this for white. Uh, I wonder what yep. And they got this for white too. I like this for white. So, and that was one of the things that um, white could do to sacrifice a pawn just to build initiative like this, which is just crazy if you're not wise about it. All right. So, I just had to show y'all that. I knew y'all. I kind of figured y'all would like that. But all right, let's get back to it. Um, so rook d1. So we was at rook d1. Uh, h4 is played, right? Uh, e3. Queen h5, of course, you know, trying to get in um, the files. Bishop h1, uh, knight f6, he's developing, knight d3, then bishop f5. You know, the bishop is pinning the knight, all right? So then white goes e4, which is a logical move. He goes e4, you know, um, breaking the pin at the same time grasping the center. This is all logical move. And you can just imagine, guys, how... You would think like the lot the most logical moves you would think like it's like almost like the perfect moves But it's like in spite of you doing all the perfect moves, It's like the L shot just always got uh, another move for you and it's just crazy So Bishop d7 is played Queen e2, you know, obviously um, white wanted to um, Obviously they didn't want to stay here, but wanted to go Queen e2 uh, to also build more um, pushing the center to build pressure, you know, which is the whole point of it. Um, so King F8, um, which is a prophylactic move because, you know, he wants to get out the center of the board. Um, so that's what he wanted to do. Uh, obviously, his opponent goes um, E5, uh, which is not a problem. Uh, the thing is, most most of y'all probably would take. Uh, taking is not the right move. You don't want to take guys due to D catches E5. Um, actually, let's see what, uh, yup, and I was right, even the engine says, uh, D catches E5, um, and it's giving Ashley White a little, uh, advantage, and, and I actually already say this, guys, because Rook does have a D file, uh, which is something that I don't like, so that's why you don't really want to take, um, we're not into opening the game up, we want to keep a closed position as much as possible, and then maneuver our attack on so keep that in mind as well. Um, so knight e8 is what El Shah does. El Shah goes knight e8. Um, and then of course his, uh, his opponent goes rook e1. Um, putting more pressure on the e-file. It almost seems like, you know, white is doing something here. But then we we do the, or El Shah does h catcher g3. 
obviously guys you the opponent is not going to go ace captures because this would be checkmate so obviously that would be the wrong point take so the best point take will actually have to be with the f point because now the queen got to protect the h point all right so after that move d captures e5 point captures uh e5 and then a nice maneuver which is nice c7 uh, of course guys uh, and this is also part of the chess strategy. You know, you want to place your piece in the right squares. That's what you want to do. Place your piece in the right squares. Uh, this knight is doing a lot of things. It's improving his position and also putting himself in a worthy square as well. Because you got knight e6, knight g5, maybe knight f3 or knight h3. Uh, it's still, it's still uh, very great moves. All right. And then his opponent hit him with a nice move. Knight c5. Um, the rook is hitting the, the bishop, and as well as the knight is hitting the bishop as well, which L side goes bishop f5, put himself in a better square to get out of harm's way. Uh, and then, of course, uh, I felt like white was doing good, but then he got greedy, and he took the pawn. Um, there's a principle with this, guys. Uh, when you're being under attack like this because he has one two three four five like he has five pieces close to the king and there's a principle even ginger gms even talk about it he says that if you have three or more pieces surrounding the king you can start an attack um that's been a principle that i always live by um so i immediately saw that this was wrong because i already saw like yo he got way more than three pieces on the king side and he's just being greedy right now so El Shad brings his pieces uh, closer to the game. He goes from knight c7 to e6. Uh, again, he he got he got this coming. He got he got a couple of things going on. Uh, so rook f1. Um, rook um, try to aim at the f file, trying to find some weakness, focal points, things like that. And then also, guys, if you're gonna play the L shot and you already got this uh, h file in, don't ever forget about this move. Bishop h6 guys and you're gonna see why this is so vital because it's uh It's a game changer, but it's also the most dangerous bishop of all time It's the most dangerous weapon ever guys uh, Of course his opponent wasn't thinking anything of it His opponent goes knight e4 and then after this knight e4 move then El Shah plays the beautiful move bishop e3 and the mate is unavoidable there's nothing you can do in this position. It is unavoidable. It's nothing that you can do. You cannot win this game at all. Even if you move the king here, uh, this is still checkmate, guys. Still checkmate. And obviously, if you go queen captures, again, this is still checkmate. All right? Um, of course, in the game, uh, his opponent played the move rook f2. Uh, obviously, El Shad doesn't take the rook. He used that. That pin to his advantage. He goes queen captures h2. The rook cannot take due to the bishop pinning the rook. And then after king f1, queen captures uh, h1 is uh, checkmate. What a beautiful game from El Shad. Um, definitely a very beautiful game. Um, so again, guys, let's actually uh, recap. You know, if you're going to play it, you know, uh, I'm sorry guys <laughs> but if you're black and you're gonna play the L shot and obviously his opponent was playing the inkless opening you know what I mean hey what's up uh, Nova Grace I'm doing doing great doing doing awesome um but yeah but let's recap guys um uh, obviously his opponent was playing the um the inkless opening right so again like I said before you know um c6 queen a5 h6 knight f3 then g5 all right so always remember that uh, from Philly man from Philly oh so I know a lot of y'all is gonna watch this on YouTube but I know a lot of y'all probably like man where's the chat at uh, I'm actually recording this from Twitch you know so this will be on YouTube so if y'all actually see this uh, just to let y'all know um, I do have a Twitch account it is tacticians a beast tacticians a beast which is my Twitch account uh, on my YouTube channel, if you go in the description, I will post my uh, Twitch account um, in the column so that y'all could go check it out. Um, also, for people that are on Twitch and everything, and even the ones that actually is going to look at this video uh, later on, um, you know, the preview, 
uh, just to let you know I do have a, a YouTube channel which is Maurice Bishop Chess and um, you know definitely uh, check that out as well uh, Nova Grays I am from Philly South Philly you know Philadelphia PA that's where I'm from yeah but um but yeah guys so I just want y'all to you know make sure y'all get that uh, yeah just, so just make sure y'all do that all right uh, and like I said if y'all got any questions uh, if y'all got any questions um, with the L shot system I know a lot of y'all do it I'm gonna get a lot of questions from y'all a lot so definitely let me know um, Nova uh, I do stream daily I stream every day um, usually in the evening um, I'll probably do like a couple of games I may do a puzzle somebody brought that to, to my attention to do some puzzles as well so I'll be doing that as well um, but yeah I pretty much do all right so um, all right guys so um, before before I go you know just to recap Queen a5 uh, a6 g5 um, Bishop g7 castle and then d6 and y'all already know um, this, this is the formation that you want eventually you want to go knight f8 knight f6 and then g4 and h5 but before you do g4 and h4 you want to make sure that when your knight is on f8 you got to go knight g6 alright so you make sure you do that as well alright um, definitely guys uh, on my YouTube channel and even people that's even on Twitch just make sure that you uh, like I said go on YouTube Maurice Bishop Chess and you'll see all my playlists of the L Shy, Black Lion, and all the other openings that I have. All right. So definitely check it out. Uh, thank you all so much. All right. And uh, thank you, Nova Grays. Are you interested in graphic designs like emoji badges, logo banner? Um, I'm interested. Uh, we can talk. Uh, just send me a message and everything, and uh, we'll go from there. All right. Uh, I definitely appreciate it. Definitely message me on here. Alright, uh, again guys, uh, thank y'all for watching. And again, if y'all have any other questions, um, I'll still be here. Alright guys, peace.